well, here we go again. We all love a little bit of player career mode on FIFA 18, don't we? Well, I mean, love is a is a bit of a strong word. We do. Alrighty then. But let's be honest, we all know it has some flaws. So today, I'm going to be bringing you the stupidest things about player career mode in FIFA 18. Because we all know the manager career mode one went really well. <laughs> I'm sorry to my parents, please don't kick me out of the house. But on a level, that video did actually do really well, so thank you guys for that, like, massively. Anywho, it's pretty much time to get into this. I promise I'm not gonna let any sort of prejudgments that I have of this game mode actually get in the way. <laughs> yeah, like, like, genuinely, like, I promise I would, like, I would never do that. I mean, my player's head doesn't even fit on the graphic for the news when the game save is loading up, so I don't have massively high hopes, to be honest. Alright, so first of all, the customization in this game mode makes literally no sense at all. Why in God's earth is it gonna take me physical game time to learn how to untuck my t-shirt? You actually have to make your debut before you can untuck your shirt in the edit pro section. So what, my 19 year old pro is gonna make his debut in a tuck t-shirt and then finish it and then suddenly realize, ah ha ha. So that's how you do it. That's actually me done with the entire save. I just came here to unlock the uh, untucking of my t-shirt and now I'm going off forever. Like, I just don't get it. I really don't understand. You can literally own a banging pair of football boots, yet you can't get a simple pair of gloves at the start of your save. All right, yeah, we're actually, we're done here. Alright, so we're moving on to objectives now. A pretty integral part, really, of a young player, especially his career, because it's how you're judged on whether you're actually going to succeed at the club. So really, it should be a pretty important part of player career mode. Alright, cool. So, the objectives are in. Um, average rating of, what, 6.4. Goals created at least one. Chances created two. In four games, I reckon that's doable. Alright, sounds. So, I'll get a chance to complete these, right, boss? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, um, yeah, so basically, definitely, yeah, a hundred, but yeah. Oh, alright, cool, awesome. I know, no, no, it's calm, it's calm, it's calm. I've got four games, you know, I'm sure I'm gonna get my chance. Are you serious? How am I meant to complete these objectives when I'm not even playing the games? And then the game actually has the audacity to tell me that I failed the objectives. Maybe I wouldn't have failed them if I'd have actually played in any of the games. I mean, realistically, let's be honest, it doesn't take a genius to realise it should just discount these objectives because you didn't get a chance to complete them. But no, this is, this is FIFA we're talking about, so why would it ever be that easy? No training on match days? I'm not even playing in the match day! Oh my god, I don't believe this. I actually don't believe this. I've actually been picked. I've actually been picked for a game, my debut, my professional debut, oh my god, my parents are going to be watching in the stands, my whole family is going to be there, this is amazing, this is such a, this is an incredible moment in my entire life, oh my god, I'm going to make my debut, man, I, I, okay, I'm going to go check the objective. Are you titting me? How is a 9 average rating attainable for a 19 year old making his debut and playing his first 4 games in professional football? Nobody else in the entire team is anywhere near that as an average rating and they're all senior players with masses of experience. In fact, I'm the closest one and I'm on a 7.4. Well maybe if you'd passed the last objectives, honestly just suck your mum. Okay, so now that we're actually playing games for once, it's time to talk about the bane of my existence. Literally, the position indicator on this game makes zero to negative sense. So here I am, casually in position, and now I'm massively out of position. Where's the transition? If I'm about to be massively out of position, then warn me beforehand with the little yellow arrow instead of just going straight to the massive red one. On top of that, right, look how long you have to be out of position for for your rating to go down. Pretty even game this for Spurs. That was 3.6 seconds. Imagine a manager in real life turning to his assistant and going, Oi, you know Eden Hazard? 
He's been too central for 3.6 seconds. Dash him in the bin. Take him off. Waste, man. You know what's even more jokes about that clip as well? I wasn't even out of position when the rating went down. The arrow had already gone by the time it was dropping me all the way from a 5.9 to a 5.5. And at points during the game, the manager will physically change your position and it doesn't even tell you. I just, oh, honestly, I just can't. I'm gonna keep this one pretty short and sweet, ladies and gentlemen. Your teammates are idiots. If you're coming into a team, right, and it hasn't really developed that much, you're gonna have to expect to completely carry the team in your backpack with the use of goals and assists. Otherwise, you're never gonna get anything done. The rest of them aren't gonna do anything. Yeah, Fernando Llorente, pretty tall geezer. I'm guessing he's gonna try and, you know, hold this up so that we can get in on the game. Or alternatively, you can just pass it straight to the opposition. That is, you know what, Fernando? Brilliant. I like the look of this attack. All right, Danny, just, you know, a bit of a heads up there. You didn't have to pass that ball straight away. Okay, you can, it's fine. You can dribble with it. Rose. Danny, I've seen more intellect from a fucking toaster. Oh, my sweet lord. They're even bad in Sims. So for those that don't know, this game mode attempts to make you better, basically, by giving you like a little player performance tab at the end of each game, which shows you what the manager says you did well and what you didn't do in that game, so you can try and improve upon it in training or whatever, or just be better at it in the next game. Now that's actually quite a good idea. Fair play to EA that they'll actually try and break down your game and make sure that you understand what you're doing well and what you're doing badly. So in theory, it should be actually a way to improve, right? Wrong. Vision for forward passing should improve. Well, I guess, you know, if that's what the boss thinks I'm struggling with, then I guess that's decent feedback. Impressive vision with those through ball passes to your teammates. I just... I mean, you can understand why I'm a little conflicted here. So is my vision good or is it bad? Do I need to get a new glasses prescription or not? Because it would be great to know. Surely the game must have some way of registering whether you're doing a good job with your through balls and your passes or whether you're doing a bad job. Or is the feedback just completely random? Basically what's happened, right, is the assistant manager's been watching my my game and has been like, yeah, he, he really needs to improve with his vision. Okay, boss, I think he, you know, it, it's something he struggles with. He might want to work on that in training. But equally, his vision, really, really good. All right, sound. It's 2017 and I still can't come on as a substitute in a FIFA player career mode game. I just honestly, just to put this into perspective right, in the first version of Be A Pro, which I think was on 2009, PES 2009, you could come on as a substitute in that game. That was eight years ago. What are EA doing? To be fair, it's probably quite a good thing, actually, that they don't have substitutions, because the position indicator would probably tell you you're sat in the wrong seat or something. All right, so emails, useless. Why don't you give me actual info in my email section? Surely that's what it's meant to be for. Oh, that's interesting. I've got a, a list of players who are on international duty. You know what? I was actually really concerned that Michelle Vaughan wouldn't get picked for an international team that has no relevance to me whatsoever. So I get emails about this stuff, yet I don't get told when someone joins the team or in fact leaves the club. Kevin Gamero joins from Atletico, no email. Socrates joins from Dortmund, no email. You could get out of the transfer window without realizing that three people in your very position have just joined and now you can't go out on loan. Why am I not getting emails telling me there's been a marquee signing for the club that I'm playing for? Surely that's actual useful info. It's stuff like this that makes me wonder whether EA genuinely think about this game mode whatsoever. I know it's very easy for them to get distracted by the journey because that's almost like player career, but it feels like this game mode could literally become dormant, like tournament mode, if they don't give it some love. I feel like people do need to stand up and really show EA that people do care about this game mode still. I don't know, there just seems to be so much wrong with it and it used to be so enjoyable that oh wait actually no never mind this looks like an important email
Oh my god! I roll out with some monsters. Looks like your team and you watches. I you know roll with imposters. Sound like the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I'm jobless. This bitch f me so hard. I might just end up unconscious. I like girls in lingerie, especially if it is crushless. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.